So Derek, welcome back to Royal Ascot with Giant Fun. Now, we obviously saw that victory, which was over six months. Why have you primarily decided that the uh, King Stands is the option for your horse this year? Um, no, good morning. Uh, I think just to get away from black caviar. <laughs> yeah. As simple as that, the yes. black caviar factor. Yes, I think she's a very smart horse and um, she's, uh, she just win again, yeah. And obviously we've just been hearing from Chris about the ground, uh, suggesting we might have slightly easy ground this year. Is that going to be a worry for your horse? Yes, actually my horse uh, really likes the, um, the firm, the firmest track, you know, uh, good to firm, you know, it suits him a lot better. Um, but, um, you know, the track, if it's just uh, maybe a little bit on the soft side, uh, yielding or something, he, he could handle it, yes. And for you, obviously, you're taking on Hortensia again, and you finished third in Dubai. Were you feeling confident now that you could reverse the placings uh, this uh, on Tuesday? Well, racing is always hard to say, but uh, we were very lucky in Dubai when uh, our horse were like uh, half, half missed the start a little bit and um, got back a little bit where if you got to jump properly, um, I think uh, Brad Doyle would, uh, would like to have a little sip on him before he produces him in the last 100 metres or something like that, you know. So uh, it'll be a very close race again. Um, um, I hope so. my horse can run well, yeah. And is there any chance that if your horse does run well, that you will double up and take on Black Caviar on, in the Diamond Jubilee? Well, I don't know about doubling up, um, but I like to see uh, each race at a time, you know. Um, I got him down to run the July Cup, so um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens on uh, Royal Ascot Day. So the Dalit July Cup is, is, is on the agenda as a... It is on if he runs well, yes. So, but you're feeling at this stage the horse is you know, confident that all, all, all systems go for Tuesday looking confident? Yeah, I put a leg in this morning in slow work. Um, he seems to be straying out very well and, um, you know, um, he's got the to the to England now. Is, um, very well, and um, you know, um, I'm hopeful he'll be definitely running a good race. Derek, for now, thank you very much. Now, you're thinking of the King's Stand Stakes, presumably, you say a bit like Derek, is it the black caviar factor, or, or what's your thinking for the King's Stand? Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, Jockey Cup, uh, BBA, RRB, and, and the owner. He gave me a chance to hear. I come here because uh, England is a great a traditional country for horse racing. And Ovilo, Royal Escorts, is so classic. I run 1,000 meters because um, he's good at 1,000 meters straight. And he, because since he came to Hong Kong, he only right, run on the right-hand side direction when they turn the bend, and also straight. So I put him to the straight. I hope he can handle the track, and also I hope he can run a good race for, for me and for my owner. And how is the horse at the moment in the, in the build-up to next week? He, he is pretty strong, but you know uh, this is his first trip. He's never been a travel uh, since he, from uh, New Zealand to Hong Kong. Uh, it's a long, long trip for him, but he, he accommodates very fast. Uh, he will be better, I think, when the, on, on the race day. I think he will be spot on. And obviously we. The ground is going to be more of an issue this year, so when you've just heard what Chris had to say, what was your thoughts on the potential of slightly soft ground? So I, I have uh, I no, not much idea about the ground, and you know, it's very hard to compare, because Hong Kong, the track, usually is good to firm, but here, people, uh, I have some ideas, people told me, so I would like to walk the track on Monday with my jockey and my owner, so on Monday maybe we have some idea. Well, no, obviously I don't want to cause a diplomatic interest to fall out between you two, but obviously do you think you can turn the placings on, on joy and fun as we saw in the first video? Are you feeling confident that you can do that? Uh, I, at that run I run six because I, because I, I, I make a mistake. I put a blinkers on him. I, it seems doesn't let the blinkers on. So uh, after we took off his blinkers, he, he, he went much better. Derek, do you think you can make sure without the, you're going to beat your compatriots? Well, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of tired horses in those two races, and the best horses are, are not running there, you know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's just only his horse, Little Bridge, running there. Yeah, it wasn't a strong field, actually. Okay, and obviously you've got some 
hot competition next to you as well. So uh, yeah, you... that's right. Yeah. So it's going to be good for gentlemen for the time being. Thank you very much. We're well, moving on now to our visitor from Bahrain and beating Rocket Man is no mean feat. So how confident were you going into that race that you could uh, uh, win that one, which looks such a competitive race on paper? Well, I'll have to say uh, we were confident uh, for a good run, um, but to win uh, so easily or, or in, such a in such a fashion was a, a bit of a surprise for us. And the, so it was a surprise, but then you obviously you went to Singapore and things didn't quite work out as, uh, as well as you would like. Explain the thinking behind that. Yeah, I think um, obviously what we've seen in Singapore is not um, the best of crypto factor. Uh, that's probably due to uh, a couple of things. One, um, he didn't travel as well as he did to here. And uh, the second being the, uh, the ground. The ground turned out to be uh, pretty soft on race day which he absolutely didn't enjoy. And obviously, we've, there's been quite a lot of rain in today. <laughs> has, that, has that been frustrating? Is that giving you cause for concern? Unfortunately, yes. We've come to um, a wet country here. But we're hoping on a, on a nice you know, summer, summer uh, week next week. Uh, and I'm told uh, Ascot drains very well. And as we've heard from um, Chris, hopefully the ground will be... Um, in good shape. And obviously he's run extremely well on, as we saw there, the Tapita at uh, Maidan and throughout the, uh, the winter there in Dubai. On the turf, is that, does that give you cons more concern or do you feel that if you get the right conditions he can cope on, on anything? Well, we still have to see him perform on the turf at this level. Uh, he has uh, performed on the turf quite well as a two-year-old when he was with Sir Mark Prescott. And uh, he hasn't disgraced himself in Dubai on that turf either. But obviously, at this level, it's a different, um, different scenario. Yeah, excited about the prospect, full stop. There's a... Well, absolutely, yes, of course. Okay. Unfortunately, well, we've got black caviar in our race. Well, I realise that, <laughs> but, um, but do you, I mean, it, are you thinking, you running for second, or what are you thinking? Do you think you... Well, I keep remind, being reminded that we are running for second spot. But do you see it like that, or are you...? Uh, well, black caviar is obviously a very good filly, you know, it's it works. 21 out of 21. So it'll take a, a hell of a horse to beat her, that's for sure. Best of luck anyway. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Fawzi, for the time being. How do you compare those, your horses and, and your prospects coming into uh, this particular week? Yeah, this is a totally different situation, a uh, very different horse. Um, probably more of a five and six furlong type horse, whereas Alverda uh, was probably more of a 1400 metre horse. But in Australia, uh, that's probably the right horse to bring over here for a July Cup or a, or a Diamond Jubilee. And obviously, the horse obviously ran, as you say, ran extremely well then in the Dali July Cup. Didn't have quite the preparation you'd like then, but this time, how's it all gone? And, and you came over quite early as well. Yeah, no, we decided this time to get here as early as we could. We had a lot of trouble travelling last time. Uh, I think it's well documented our horse lost a lot of weight. And uh, this time we wanted to be sure to get here early, settle in and uh, get her acclimatised and give ourselves every chance. Uh, did she lose any weight and is she in tip-top condition as yeah. far as you're concerned? Yeah, no, she travelled brilliantly from uh, Dubai to here and I think breaking up the trip really helped as well and uh, she's in top order. And obviously uh, looking at the ground I know that might be a little bit more of a concern. I, would, I had the privilege of sitting next to you mm. last night and definitely the ground seemed to be a, a concern. Yeah it is a bit of a concern. Listen she's got mixed form I think on, on rain affected tracks but um, she's definitely better on top of the ground there's no doubt and uh, she does have a devastating turn of foot, as, have you seen, as you've seen as she, when she's right, and uh, you know, that slow ground might just take away a bit of that dash. And obviously, how do you assess the form? Because I know you've looked at it closely, and you've obviously yeah. seen with Joy and Fan and the others that are lining up. Are you feeling reasonably confident? Yeah, I am. Uh, I think if it was a dry track, I'd, I'd be feeling confident, but um, uh, like, uh, it's going to be a very tough race, obviously, with um, Black Caviar running. A, a lot of the field is, I guess, a lot of the... The, the competition's increased, and um, uh, in saying that, a lot of the favourites also want firm ground. So a few of us are all in the same boat. I'm sure these guys are, would be keener on firm ground, as, as would Soul Power. So um, I'd say four or five of the, the liked horses um, would prefer firm ground, and therefore it's, it's going to be open. And would you... if runs well, think about taking on Black Caviar? Yeah, I would. Um, if the circumstances were right, uh, she came through the... Obviously, the horse's welfare is number one. If she came through the race well and uh, the weather was fine on, on Saturday, I'd, I'd certainly consider it.
Okay, well, one little tent here at Ascot in Perth. Uh, what, how do they two, the two Ascots compare? Very different, very different. Uh, uh, for people who don't know, explain the difference. It's a very, the dress code is certainly very different anyway. <laughs> so you will be wearing your top hat and tail next week. Not Absol that. Absolutely. You, you, you get in there with shorts and thongs, I'd say. Thongs? <laughs> Ding -dong. Different type of thongs. <laughs> <laughs> Flip -flop. Yeah, flip flops. <laughs> should make that uh, clear. Uh, lost in translation, then, obviously. Yes, this time last year, you announced, or it was announced, that uh, black caviar would be coming to Royal Ascot this year. When finally did the, you press the button that we'd, you'd send the horse over here? Yeah, I think it was probably January, February this year. Things started to fall into place to, to be here, um, and since then, everything's gone perfectly to plan. The two Adelaide wins, uh, they were the perfect races to, to put the lead up into to get her here, and then the three gallops in the past fortnight in Melbourne. Uh, she's here rock hard, fit, ready to go at, at the home of racing. Was it a hard decision when you were having the meetings at the early part of the year, or was it in the end a fairly simple discussion to be had? Uh, in the end it was pretty simple, but we never let Pete make decisions lightly. We, we sat him down and, and forced him to write out a map that suited him, and it would allow him to train her to, to get her here in the shape that she's turned up in. And he put it all down on paper, put it to us, we put it to the owners and, and everyone was happy and signed off on it. And that presumably meant the reason why Dubai didn't happen because obviously there was at some stage talk that you would have gone to the Dubai World Cup meeting. Yeah, well, the owners, it was their wish to, to be here and we thought uh, the best way to get her here to win for them was to maybe dodge that race and keep her at home and give her that build up without the risk of having a, a drawn out long trip. And, and not have so many things in our control when we can travel, when we can't, uh, the tracks we want to use, that all came into effect. I mean, obviously we know and we see from that footage that she is adored by everyone, but just give us, perhaps for people who haven't experienced, the sense of the, sort of the black caviar phenomenon in Australia and the way that the, the country seems to have taken to her because uh, uh, you know, things, you know, football matches have been changed uh, so that they can show her racing. I mean, it's extraordinary the, the level of interest in her. Yeah, that was good. She, um, she got a football game moved back, which uh, I don't think that would happen here in the, the FA. Um, she interrupted a, a Grand Slam tennis tournament one night so, so they could show the race. Um, literally, since she's grown wings, everything else has with her as well. Um, the, fan, the fan base she's got, we have... I was talking to the boys this morning, we get countless emails and pictures of five-year-old, six-year-old kids drawing her and, and sending us their, their pictures. Uh, it's just phenomenal. And how easy is it that to sort of manage and the pressure that puts you under? We've got the right things in place to manage that. About 18 months ago, we, we took a few steps that would allow our stable to mainly train her and, and everything else would be taken out of, away from us, such as all the, uh, the extra pressure that goes with all that. We, we don't have to deal with a, a lot of the stuff. We just want to train the horse and, and have her turn up on race day and, uh, and have her 100% ready to win for her fans. And since you've come over here, um, we obviously saw pictures in the, uh, the, the Lycra suit or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, she, obviously, people have seen her this morning and it seems to have settled in well as far as you're concerned. She has. She's been here close, close to a week now. Uh, I think Peter's ar arriving in the next 24 hours. But the boys here, Tony and, and Pat, They've done an outstanding job taking over from the, the team at home at Caulfield. Uh, they, they've just taken over and, and got her here and uh, full credit to them, they've done a magnificent job. They, this was always going to be half the battle, getting a horse that we've never travelled over here and, and have her settle in without any complications and, and now we can give her a, her last lead up into the race. And how nervous are you about next week? Because obviously first run outside Australia, so much expectation on her shoulders. It does get a little bit like that, the pressure. You know, things can only go wrong. That, that's the way we look at it. And, and if we can take everything that's in our control and cover that, well then if, if something does go wrong, if it's out of our control, we, we've done our best. Uh, if she's beaten, she's beaten. But we're, we're not here to be beaten, that's for sure. And the ground, is, it, is that something that could go wrong? If it's very soft, what, what would you like to see? I, I don't think so. We'd prefer a, a good grounding like any good sprinters, they probably all want good ground. Um, we've only ever thought about taking her out of a race once and that was in the, the new market at Flemington 2010 
when she was top weight in a handicap and it meant a lot to us that day. And there was a risk if the track was wet, we would probably pull her out. Um, but now, every race, special conditions, uh, set weights, that sort of thing, she's not giving away an advantage, so uh, that's not going to enter our plans at the moment. We won't be using that as an excuse if, she, if she's beaten on my ground. But all systems go, and, it, and <coughs> you can feel that over here even now. I mean, the excitement is building to, to her appearance over here. Yeah, I guess uh, like this is a lot of racing media here, but the non-racing media that have wanted to get involved, that, that's outstanding. In a year where you've got the Olympic Games, you know, this is a great lead-up. We're putting racing on the front pages and, <coughs> and taking advantage of that. Jeff, thank you very much. Now a chance for questions from the, the floor. Just Becky and Olivia will run around with the uh, microphones. As I say, just please say your name and from where you're from if you have any questions. Goodness me. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Uh, Steve Moran from Melbourne. Uh, Rupert, I'm just wondering if uh, the guys could all just confirm their riders and when they arrive. Uh, I'll first, Steve. Um, Luke Nolan, obviously. Uh, I think he's planning to arrive on Monday to, to have a sit on the mare in the, in the last few days leading up to the race. Uh, Craig Williams, uh, he arrives on Monday. Uh, he won't sit on the horse before the race, but uh, arrives Monday. He's obviously contracting Japan, and uh, he'll just be here for, I think, Tuesday. Kieran Fallon, probably Biden. Uh, Seth Whitten. Yeah. Does he come in? He come on Monday morning, so he'll walk on the turn on Monday afternoon. Uh, Brad Doyle, he's in the new market. Uh, he's here, yeah. Has he been riding over in the morning? Or? No, he doesn't need to ride it. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Oh, no, sorry, there is a question. Take the up the front. Uh, the race, uh, just nothing going wrong in the race. Uh, we've seen a lot. We've all seen a lot of racing. Jockeys can fall off, horses can fall. Anything can go wrong. Your barrier might open a, a, a touch late. Anything can go wrong in racing. Um, that's out of out of your control. We don't want to think about things like that. But that's the the one percenters that you're always nervous and worried about. Gina Bryce from Real UK. Um, somebody mentioned to me yesterday that that caviar run in some barrier trials, and one of which was on pretty heavy ground. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that, that's always been in the back of our minds that she did have that experience that day and, and she went super, ran great time. It was on a very heavy track at, down at Cranbourne in the, in the south of Melbourne. Uh, and because of that, we've always been confident that she would cope with soft ground, although we've never had to, to run her on it. Uh, every time she's ran, she's normally brought the good weather with her. So hopefully we'll get the same again next week. Any more? Well, thank you very much all for coming. Thank you in particular to our panellists this morning. And uh, wish you all the best of luck for next week uh, in your chosen races. And I'm sure it's going to be a very, very memorable Diamond Jubilee Royal Ascot. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.